good afternoon students today our topic is interfaces and exception handling in java so today first we can discuss about the interface so what is interface so interface in java is a blueprint of a class so interface in java is a blueprint of a class so the interface contains the interface contains static constants as well as the abstract methods so interface is the blueprint of a class it contains static constants and abstract methods so what is abstract methods abstract method is a method it does not contain implementation so here in interfaces we have the abstract methods in java so that does not contain the method body so a method does not contain the body that methods are called abstract methods so in the interface is used in java to achieve abstraction and multiple inheritance so interface concept is very useful in java to achieve abstraction concept as well as the multiple inheritance concept the interfaces cannot be instantiated the interfaces cannot be instantiated just like abstract class so we cannot create the objects to the interface next point here already we know a class extends another class that means one class properties can be used in another class by using the concept of inheritance for that we can use the extends keyword similarly an interface can extend another interface that means one interface properties can be used in another interface for that we can use a keyword extends keyword similarly a class use the properties of the interface using a keyword implements that means the interface properties can be used in a class using a keyword implements keyword so that means one class properties can be used in another class using a keyword extends similarly one interface properties can be used in another interface using the extends keyword and the interface properties can be used in a class using the implements keyword so here you can see the example diagram for this one so here class extends another class that means one class properties can be used in another class similarly a class implements interface that means the interface properties can be used in a class similarly interface extends interface that means one interface properties can be used in another interface so this is the basic idea about the interfaces now we can see how we can declare the interfaces in java so to declare the interfaces in java we have a keyword that is the interface keyword so using the interface keyword in java we can declare the interfaces so the syntax the form format to create the to define the interface is interface interface name it contains variables similarly it contains the methods the variables you know what type of variables it can store it can store the static constants and the methods are the abstract methods so these are the static constants similarly the methods are the abstract methods that means abstract methods means there is no body for the methods there is no implementation for the method that methods are called abstract methods for example we can create the interface using this form interface interface name is a so a is the interface in interface a we can declare the variables 
as well as the methods for example type int x equal to 10 similarly int y equal to 20 and the methods are written type y the method name is display so here we cannot implement the method so we can just declare that method so this is the way to create the interfaces in java so now we can see the examples for the interfaces so before going to that one what are the properties of the interfaces the interface has the different properties all of you know already we know the interface is implicitly abstract the interface is implicitly abstract no need to use the abstract keyword to declare the interface so just like the abstract class no need to use the abstract keyword so interfaces are implicitly abstract similarly the method in the interface is also a abstract no need to use the abstract keyword next the methods in the interface are implicitly public that means the methods which are declared in the interface all are the public so simply we told interface variables are by default public static and final similarly the methods are public and abstract so the interface contains variables and methods by default the interface variables are public static and final similarly the interface methods are by default public and abstract for example suppose when we write the interface just like this interface interface name printable it contains a variable int min equal to 5 min is the constant variable similarly we have the abstract method that is the white print so the compiler the compiler implicitly convert this interface into interface printable the variable by defaults are public static and final so public static final int min equal to 5 similarly the methods in the interface by default are public and abstract so wide print is converted into public abstract wide print so the compiler implicitly convert the interface into this format so this is the properties of the interfaces now we can see an example how we can use the interface properties in another interface for that we can use a keyword extends keyword so just like how we can use the one class properties in the another class properties for that we can use the extend keyword similarly we can extend one interface to another interface so here we can see one example consider an interface printable it contains a abstract method print method now this interface properties can be used in another interface using a keyword extends keyword see interface showable extends printable that means the printable properties print can be used in showable interface the showable interface contains the two abstract methods one method is the show method one method is the print method that is derived from the printable interface so this is the how we can extend one interface to another interface so we can see one example or program for the interfaces for example printable is a one interface this contain abstract method print now that printable interface properties can be used in a class for that we can use a keyword implements keyword so 
class interface example implements printable that means the printable properties can be used in a class interface ex class so here we can override the print method in the class interface example so we are right we are overriding a print method public wide print method so in this we are writing a simple system dot out dot print ln hello so the print method just display a hello now in the main method we are creating a object for the class interface ex i is the object equal to new interface ex so by using objects we can call the methods ie dot print so ie dot print means it will call the print method so the output for this program is the hello so in this way the interface properties can be used in a class for that we can use the implements keyword so this is the example for the interfaces now already we know the interfaces are used to achieve the abstraction as well as the multiple inheritance so we can see how to h how to develop the multiple inheritance concept using the interfaces for that already we know so a class implements the multiple interfaces this is the diagram a class implements the multiple interfaces that means the two interfaces properties can be used in a class similarly an interface extends multiple interfaces so an interface extend the multiple interfaces that means these two interfaces properties can be used in the interface so using the interfaces we can achieve the concept of the multiple inheritance so using a class the class implements the multiple interfaces similarly an interface extends the multiple interfaces now we can see one example how to achieve the multiple inheritance in java so this is the program for that one first we are taking the two interfaces one interface is the printable interface it contains a abstract method print method similarly we have the another interface showable interface it contains a method show method now these two interfaces properties can be used in a class so that is the class name is the multiple ex so we see the diagram multiple ex is the class this class can use the properties of the printable interface similarly showable interface so the printable interface properties and the showable interface properties can be used in the multiple ex class for that we can use the keyword implements keyword so this is the diagrammatic representation so class multiple ex implements printable comma showable that means the multiple ex class can derive the properties of the interfaces printable as well as the showable so now we can override the print method in the multiple ex class similarly we can override the show method in the multiple ex class next we can create the main method so in the main method we can create the object for the multiple ex class so using this object we can call the print method as well as the show method so the output of this program is when we call m dot print method it will display the output hello similarly when we call the m dot show method so it will display the output is the welcome so the output for this program is simply hello and welcome so in this way in java we can develop multiple inheritance concept using the interfaces next exception handling so what is the exception handling so before going to that exception handling what is the exception so exception is a problem that arises during the execution of the program 
so whenever we are executing a program a problem occurred that problem is called exception so when the exception was occurs it will disturb the normal flow of the program so whenever an exception occurred it will disturb the normal flow of the program that means the program terminates abnormally so whenever an exception occurs during execution of the program the program terminates abnormally so this is not the correct process this is the not the correct way so for that we can handle the exceptions so when the exception was occur there are many reasons to raise the exceptions some of the reasons to occur for the exceptions are invalid user input similarly device failures loss of network connection physical limitations code errors opening and unavailable file so these are the some reasons to occur the exceptions here we have different types of exceptions so in java we have the two types of exceptions one is the built in exceptions second one is the user defined exceptions so the built in exceptions means the built in exceptions are the exceptions that are predefined in java libraries next one user defined exceptions are custom exceptions so by using the user defined exception user create his own exception so that is called as the custom exceptions so in java we have the two types of exceptions built in user defined so built in means java provides predefined exceptions next user defined exception means the user create his own exceptions so to create the exception to handle the exceptions we have the different ways so to handle the exceptions we have the three ways one way is the try catch block second way is the finally block and the third way is the throw and throws keyword so we have the three approaches to handle the exceptions so try catch block finally block and throw and throws keyword so first we can see try catch block so by using the try catch how we can handle the exceptions so first the syntax for the try catch block is try we can write the statements that may cause an exceptions so the statements that may cause exceptions that type of statements are placed in the try block so whenever exception was occurred so whenever exception is raised then it will execute the corresponding catch block so this is the syntax of the try catch block so the statements that may raise an exception that type of statements are placed in the try block whenever the exception is raised it will execute the corresponding catch block so this is the syntax for the try catch block so try the statements that may cause an exception and we can write the immediately catch block so catch block is used to execute the statements whenever exception occurs similarly we have another state syntax is syntax for the try finally block so try already we know in the try block we can place the statements that may cause an exception so whether the exception occurs or not in that case to execute the statements we can put the statements in the finally block so generally in the catch block when the exception is raised then the corresponding catch block was executed but when we put the statements in the finally block the statements always executed whether the exception occurs or not for that we can use a syntax of try finally block so now we can use another syntax to handle the exceptions syntax of try catch finally that means we can use the try block 
comma catch block as well as the finally block so in the try block we can place the statements that may cause the exception in the catch block we can put the statements that statement will execute if the exception occurs in the finally block we can place the statements whether the exception occurs or not so generally we can use the syntax of try catch block so now we can see example for the try catch block So this is the example. Suppose whenever we cannot use the exception handling concept, what happens? We can see. First one, we are writing a public class try catch. In this, we are writing a main method. In this, the statement int data equal to 50 by 0. So 50 by 0 means it will cause and it will throw the exception. So whenever the exception was occurred the program execute terminate abnormally so that means the output does not print the rest of the code so that means we got the output java dot lang dot arithmetic exception divided by zero so in this program we are not handling the exceptions so whenever the exception occurs this program abnormally terminates so to avoid this problem, we can use the exception handling concept. So for that, we can use the try block. So generally, the statement that may raise the exception is into data equal to 50 by 0. So this statement may raise the exception. So we can put the statements in the try block. So whenever the exception occurs, it executes the corresponding block. So the corresponding catch block. So we are writing a catch block. Catch at the magic exception e system dot out dot print e. So after handling the exceptions, it will execute the last statement, last print statement. So the output is suppose into data equal to 50 by 0. So it raises the exception. So whenever exception occurs, it does not terminate the abnormally. So it will go to the corresponding catch block so the catch block handle this exception so the output of this catch block is java dot lang dot arithmetic exception divided by zero so after execution the catch block now the execution flow continues normally so it will print the system dot out dot print and rest of code so we got the output java dot lang dot arithmetic exception divided by zero similarly the rest of the code so this is the how we can handle the exceptions in java so this is the exception handling basic concepts and interfaces so tomorrow we can see the remaining approaches of the exception handling okay thank you